character that we chose was cyberbullying slash bullying, as you know, a total. Um, this is a picture of Rebecca Sedwick. I'm not sure if y'all can see exactly, but she's like 13 years old, and a couple months ago, she was bullied to the point where she climbed on top of like a cell tower of like a technology thing, and she jumped off because of like two different two um. A 12-year-old girl and a 14-year-old girl, they were online bullying her, calling her names on her Ask FM, her kick, sending her messages, and she just couldn't take it anymore. So, what is it exactly? Cyberbullying is... The use of technology like cell phones and the internet to bully and harass another person. So like if you're messaging someone, you know, like on a different website or on your phone, you know, that's cyberbullying, whether you mean to or not. And it can take many forms, like I said, sending messages or threats to a person's email or cell phone, spreading rumors or online through text, posting hurtful or threatening messages on social networks or web pages, pretending to be someone else online or hurting another person, taking unflattering pictures of a person and spreading them through cell phones or the internet. Cyberbullying affects teenagers more than we realize. Many times it can lead to anxiety, depression, and even suicide. Once something is posted on the internet, it may never disappear. And that statement should be like the biggest one of all because there's many times where kids are like, because some people don't have a high tolerance level, and if they're pushed to the point where they feel they need to do this to themselves just to feel better, that's a problem. It's a major problem. With that story, like you could see that basically anything like people say could like cause people to like do suicide just like the fact that he was gay and like even his family accepted it but people had to go out of their way to like make fun of him for that and if people see bullies they, like we should all stop it like whether we think it's little or big you never know what it could do to a person you know how like somebody will like make a let's say okay so i'm like for example i say oh my god you're ugly leave me alone and if i say that and she doesn't laugh, and she takes it to heart, and she thinks about it, I'm technically bullying her. Whether I think I'm doing it or not, like, absent-mindedly I am. And she may think of it as, oh, well, maybe she's joking, but then again, maybe she's not. And if you have to think about whether your friend is joking with you or not about it, you're technically bullying them, and you're hurting their feelings. On the poster, it says, share your stories to make you and others feel bet uh, better and more aware. The importance of knowing what bullying is and how it affects teens, and how do you distinguish between jokes and bullying. Those are like the three main points we're going to focus on. And then, um, after this meeting, you will know all of this and make new friends by sharing your stories and realize there are other, uh, others going through the same thing as you. And then, it says, passes will be found in the counseling office. This meeting will be held during lunch periods on days to be announced. So um, during lunch, like the lunch period, we're gonna all get together and share stories and just focus on how to stop it or try to help prevent it. So are you guys going to be working with the counseling office as well after yeah, talking yeah. to Mr. Rowley? Yes, we already gave the counseling office the passes and stuff like that. So once we talk to Mr. Rowley, we can just make comments. During the meeting, we will be helping those who are currently being affected by bullying. We'll give them advice on how to prevent and stop bullying. And we'll also get them into a new positive environment where they can share stories and make new friends. So yeah. Usually when you're being bullied, especially cyberbullying, because when you go home, you think it's a safe place, and when you go home, and then that changes into a safe place, into an environment where you don't feel like you're home, you feel like someone's there constantly making fun of you, you feel like you're alone, and so we want to change that and make them realize that you're not alone. We, I've gone through this, like, I know how you feel, 
I can share my story with you, you can share yours, and we can like bond from that and like get closer. And then from that, you can make a new friend, and they can help you get through the cyberbullying and make that make you feel stronger of a person. they become the bully because they're just so used to negative comments that they themselves begin to reflect that and just start being the bully. They want others to feel how they felt and it's like it's just a cycle that's going to keep occurring. If you hurt someone and they feel hurt, they want to hurt someone else and it just keeps on going and if we stop it like at the root of it, it won't keep happening, you know? And if we see something, you don't want to think, oh, I don't want to get into that. Maybe I, that's not my business. It is your business. Because maybe you don't know that person, but maybe somewhere along in life, somebody does that to you, and maybe you should have thought, oh, I could have stopped that, and this wouldn't have happened to me. You know? And I guess the overall thing is if you see it, stop it, or at least try. Because you don't know how bad that person might be. They might be on the brink of doing something really bad. And if you think about it, you could have helped that person. You could have maybe potentially stopped something from happening. If you don't have that safe place to go to, where are you gonna? What are you gonna do? We don't want, like we said before, we don't want to get to the point where you want to hurt yourself personally to get your point across. As soon as it happens, you should be able to talk to someone and talk your problems out. You know, just to ease that pain.